Well, hello, hello, hello. We're back. We're finally back. We're finally back. And obviously with new music. <laughs> it's been a day. Kelly. Okay. Okay. Well, I'll let it slide for today. We're trying something new today. Okay. Sounds I don't good. think we're going to stay with it, but we're just going to go with it for nice. today. I love it. <laughs> All right, so obviously we have one of my favorite guests, so go ahead and introduce him, yes. Kimberly. Today we have Mr. Schultz, the Ta-da. infamous, infamous, I cannot speak. Maybe today wasn't a good day for us to do this. It's fine. It's fine. Pete, you are our board chair, our DDA board chair, former fire chief Correct. for Oxford mm-hmm. Township. What am I missing? What else did you do? Uh, All the to, things. Prior I to that, I was golf course superintendent okay. for 30 years. Oh, my gosh. I didn't know that. Did you know that? I did know this, but I think our audience should know how did you switch from that to being a fire chief? I was on the fire department since 1976 as paid on call, and I went through the ranks during that entire time. And in 2006, I was the opportunity to be hired in 2007 as the assistant chief. And after a year of that, former chief Jack Leroy retired. And then I was promoted into his position. That seems, I know nothing about the fire industry, so to speak, but that seems like a really cool, like, opportunity to jump from what you were doing to the assistant chief. It was. I mean, my entire time as a volunteer firefighter officer, um, did everything, including all the medicals and the training and progressed up through. And when the opportunity became available, then I went ahead and applied for it and was accepted. That's awesome. Now, did you have to, at that time, be a paramedic as well, or is that something that's more new for guys who are coming into the program? That started in 2006. We actually had a millage go through that provided the funding for ALS services. And so the year before I became full-time is when that went into effect. And that's when we started hiring the full-time firefighters slash paramedics. I have to tell you a funny story. So, when I first joined the DDA, I went around and I sat down with different people, like in different positions, just to learn about the community and what people did. And I remember sitting down with you in your office within the first couple of weeks of me working there and just learning about what you did. In in yeah, and you weren't in the, you were not the board chair at that time. You were no. on the board, but you were not the board chair, so we didn't have as much interaction. You were the plant guy. Okay. The yeah. plant guy. The plant guy. I love that. You yeah. are the plant guy. Now you're like the everything guy. He is the everything guy. <laughs> so the funny thing about Pete is, for everybody listening, is we really had to talk him into not only staying on the board, because he's been on the board for 13 years, so he's oh our longest gosh. standing member. Okay. But then we had to talk him into taking over board yeah. chair, which means dealing with us two every day. I Yes, and I can see the gleam in your eyes. <laughs> so exciting. So exciting. Oh my I love it. But Pete, Oxford has always been home, right? Correct. So since you were a child or did your family move here? We moved here when I was seven years old. Okay. And have been in the Oxford schools my entire life. Went to Oxford schools from third grade on, graduated, um, got married. My family has been here in Oxford. Um, my daughters all went to Oxford schools, graduated from there. Um, my Middle daughter has still moved back to Oxford with her family, and their children all went through Oxford schools, graduated from Oxford schools. So we've been a part of the entire community for, you know, for long years. My dad was retired from Oxford schools. He was in charge of buildings and grounds and transportation. Okay. And he held that position for, you know, many years. And that was before we even had a bus garage, before we even had any of that stuff, working out of a parking lot. And have worked, you know, helped him with everything, moving things around. I was also, you know, driving school buses. I do remember hearing that. (laughs) Can we, (laughs) let's touch on this subject for a second. Because how old were you when you started driving a bus? I turned 18 in November. And that December, I came home from my first freshman year at Michigan State. Winter break. And my dad put me to job, you know, right away driving a uh, substitute bus driver for my entire Christmas vacation. <laughs> That's a big job. Okay, can we talk about this for a second? Because Oxford is known for so many back roads, and those back roads are very oh windy, goodness. these dirt roads. We all know them. So I love them. Were you nervous to do that? Not really, because I'd been here my entire life, so I knew yeah. all the roads, knew where they all were. 
Um, I've been driving him, you know, since I started learning how to drive. Um, I rode with him all those years going out to rescue the buses when they were stuck or broke down out in the country yeah. roads. I mean, Oxford covers, what, six townships, I believe yeah. it is, that we, you know, we cover. So it's not just knowing the Oxford community. It was all the surrounding communities, too, that we had to know. And at that time, here I am, you know, 18 years old, and of all the bus drivers that they had at the time, I, as a substitute driver, I drove every single route during that time oh, because wow. as a substitute driver, plus I knew the area where a lot of them yeah. didn't even know where they were heading to. So This yeah. is before GPS. I'm just going to say, know. so I'm very directionally challenged. I'm very <laughs> glad that you are not, but those kids would have never made it to school with me. 1,000%. There was no way. <laughs> well, didn't we try and get Pete to drive the trolley? Yes, we for did. For a while? Yes, we did. And you politely declined. Absolutely. It was a lot easier <laughs> dealing with little kids. I mean, this would have been totally different dealing with adults. So. That's true. I feel That's like true. Pete politely declines a lot of our requests. I mean, he's a good sport. He's a good sport. But one thing I think that a lot of people don't realize is when, and still now, but when you were fire chief, it wasn't just you overseeing that department, but you were putting in so much of your work and effort on the DDA board. You were going to all of the township meetings. You were going to planning commission meetings. So how did you find the balance, but still being, you know, a dad and a husband? What did that look like for you? It was once you got into the rhythm of it, I mean, you're, you know, you're the same you're dealing with that right now with your little children and everything. You have a whole routine of every day. You've got bags packed all the times. I'm going here. You grab a bag and away you go. And it was the same thing. My wife worked full time during that time. So I was the one that picked him up from school, would come home, feed him dinner and head on out. Yet she hadn't been home from her job yet. So then I would head on to my meetings. Uh, you know, my parents would watch, you know, the, the children while I was gone at the meetings and everything. But it was just a constant schedule. We knew, you know, between the two of us what our whole week was or what was coming up for the next couple of weeks and everything. So we definitely had a, a calendar that was well marked up and full yeah. all the time. So it definitely, you know, made you organize and stuff to be prepared for it. I mean, that's where I learned the whole thing of a Franklin planner to mm -hmm. try to, to get everything yeah. down and keep it organized and everything. Um, but it, it was extremely interested all the time being with the planning commissions, working with the township, working with the village, um, you learned about everything that's coming and going on in the township and village, about future plans, uh, future development that comes in. It was interesting to be on the groundbreaking part of it as far as, you know, what was going to happen with the development, what was going to be as far as the streets and, you know, all the things that involved with the fire code and everything. So it was always interesting to see, you know, to be at the, the front of what everything was going on and constantly getting calls from my daughter and everything. Oh, what's going on? What's going on? What's <laughs> yep, going on? yep. Well, everywhere you're the you, source of info. Everywhere yeah. you go, everybody wanted to know what was the latest and what was coming and going. And it's, you know, you hear so many rumors all over the place and it's like, mm -hmm. no, that's no. not it was close right. to what it is. We are so. not getting a White Castle. I was just going <laughs> to say, but I hear we are getting a Chick-fil-A in Orion. Really? I heard that. Okay. Yeah. Yes, well, they are down on Brown Road. Yes. Oh, you heard it here. See? Awesome. I'm I love so that. I'm so excited about this. So if I, I just like to circle back really quick. Uh, you said, where did you go to school? Oxford School. No, I mean for college? Michigan State. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that's a great institution. Oh, fabulous. Fantastic. So what did you study while you were there? Landscape and nursery management. Okay. So did you know growing up that that's what you wanted to do? How did you fall into that? I started when I was in high school in 10th grade, uh, working for a local landscaper that in Oxford used to be Wells Landscaping. And I started there, 14 years old, working for him after school and on Saturdays, and continued all the way up through till high, you know, through high school. And then um, at that point, it's kind of like we had a career day at, at um, Oxford Schools, and Michigan State was there with their agricultural technology programs, which mm -hmm. includes landscape, which includes floriculture. It also includes working with greenhouses and that sort of a thing. And with the interest that I had in working with landscaping, I was like, wow, there's a program here. So it was a two-year program, went to Michigan State, graduated from there, and right away started in the landscape industry after that. That's awesome. That is cool. So what would you say are some of your favorite things about your time in landscaping and then your time in the uh, fire department? The fire yeah. department. Thank you. I think they both kind of interacted to the point that, I mean, I can drive around town right now and actually in through some of the subdivisions like down Tanview and Spezia and some of the other areas and point to, you know, now they're some of the older homes. But I was doing this back in, you know, 1970, 71, 72, 73. 
And it's like, I landscaped that house, I landscaped that house, mm-hmm. I landscaped the Oh, actual, that is cool. The actual bank that they're just yeah. now renovating, all the plant material that was around there that just got, all got cut down here yeah. last week. I planted all those when that building was built. So it's just I that. I know that. That's I cool. Know. That part of, you know, doing things all the way to the point of, you know, I did landscape after that in the companies, um, the Detroit News Building down on six on 16 Mile and Mount Road. I landscaped that entire building. No kidding. So, I mean, it's just the involvement that you had over the years to be able to drive around and, say, and see how everything is matured and what it looks yeah. like. Same thing with the fire department, um, involved with the different planning of the different subdivisions and buildings that came to town, and then at the same time going on medical calls, fire calls, to be able to point to that house, to that factory, to that building, you mm-hmm. know, been there, been there, been there, been in that house, you know, all the different things that we want, and even the surrounding communities. I mean, from Orion to Addison, Brandon, Metamora, mm-hmm. to be able to go around and say, been there, been there, been there, kind of a yeah. thing. So, and again, it's it's still there, and it's kind of, you know, every time you see it, it kind of makes you feel, you know, good inside that I had some hand in helping with it. Mm-hmm. That is cool. What is your that. favorite thing about being involved with the DDA? Us. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Being as I've been involved with multiple different directors over the time. Okay. <laughs> I think that the best part about it is, that, again, it's Oxford is my home community. This yeah. is, you know, I wanted to see it flourish. I wanted to see it grow. I want my children, my grandchildren to be able to enjoy being here. I'm proud of the community. Uh, it gives me an opportunity to, to help with everything downtown, with the help with the public. It makes it, you know, again, we just said the Scarecrow Festival to see that many kids and families come yeah. downtown and everybody's having a good time and recreation and, you know, that's involved with it. And, it get, you know, it gives you a warm feeling that they're all, you know, happy about it. Yeah. yeah. It is so cool to see somebody who grew up here who's now still involved, but also somebody who does appreciate the little things like mm-hmm. the kids at the Scarecrow Fest or, you know, the plantings around town and things of that nature. But I mean, you are our source of knowledge, I have to say. You know, anytime something comes up, even at the village, not even within the DDA, you know, I feel like you're the first person that people call because you do have that longstanding history, but also quite a mind because you can bring up things from like meetings like 20 years ago. And I'm like, (laughs) I can't remember yesterday. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, is that because you've just been a part of it for so long or how do you have you know, all of that history. I mean, you really do remember those details and those facts. Have you always been like that? I have. It's been a part of, you know, you ex- you experienced it. You were there when it happened. I mean, there's many momentous events that have happened in our community, some good, some bad, but I mean, you've been part of it and it's, you know, it leaves a mark on your, you know, on your memory and everything. So it, it's, great to be able to call back on it to remember when they start saying about a new idea well let's do this and it's like okay we've tried it in Been the past there, done that. It, tried did, it. It, it didn't work right. or it did work and this is what worked at but actually i think if we changed it a little bit mm-hmm. i think it would be you know something better for the entire community so that's the best part of it yeah this is the whole plant guy is now a whole different perspective for me now knowing your background i did not know that before i just thought you were into plants <laughs> I remember, so I got that first feel when we were going through the M24 project and I came on at that, like the bitter end of it when we were doing the trees and Pete had the most knowledge about the trees and was telling me all the things. And I was going to check out the root balls of these trees that were just delivered and what to look for. I was so afraid to mess it up because I'm like, Pete's going to know. Yeah. Like, I'm like, (laughs) he knows. (laughs) You came into it like shortly after I started, you came in and you're like, you're going to need to go cut back this and do this yes. and do this. And we're like, okay, yeah, sure, yeah, we'll do it. Yeah. We got it. So what do you like to do in your free time, Pete? It used to be that I had, you know, my earlier when I had some free time, I was involved with Habitat for Humanity okay. up in the Flint area. And I enjoy construction and building things, doing things. So I get, we know again, that. a lot of it. <laughs> We you love know, this about you. Do. Thank you. It's how I've gained experience doing those things. Yeah. I've been there, done that sort of a thing. And that was kind of like my thing to do for a long time was helping out with Habitat for Humanity, doing those kind of projects. Um, other than that, I mean, I've enjoyed the fire career and everything that went around it for so much for so many years. I mean, that's, you know, almost like a hobby to the begin with, but the thing, there's a lot of a lot of things that you do and learn and continue to learn there that was always interesting. So I, that's pretty much where my interests have relied most of the time. 
Awesome. And we would totally be remiss if we didn't mention. I was going to wait for him to say it. I won't call it his better half, but oh. she is the life of the party <laughs> and we love her. Oh, we do. I thought you were talking about the lions. Oh, oh, we do need to <laughs> mention the lions. Okay, let's I mention was Wendy for first yes, because I have course. a feeling that Wendy might be listening. And if we mention the lions before Wendy, oh my gosh. you're going to be in the doghouse. Yes. Yeah. No, so we're going to be in the doghouse. Yeah, true. <laughs> so tell us about Wendy. I met my wife when she was in one of my further I don't know, past careers. I was the golf course superintendent at Oxford Hills Golf Course. And my wife was the bartender slash night manager at Oxford Hills. So we kind of like met each other, you know, across the bar, if you want to say that, when oh. I would come in for my lunches and everything. And then from there, we had get togethers with, you know, all the employees would play football in the, in the winter, you know, in the fall out on the fairway and everything. And it just, you know, blossomed, we'll say, from that. So. so, how long have you guys been married now? Don't get it wrong. Oh, boy. I should have teed him up. Since 1981. Okay. 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 All right. Love that many that. years. Yes. We love Wendy. Uh, as much, maybe a little bit more than we love you, Pete. Ah, uh, that's not understandable. Okay. Yeah. So, I, hi, I, Wendy. I won't say that. <laughs> I love you both just okay. the same. Let me play the politics here. Oh, wow. You Usually I'm the one doing that. So, no, I she's know. fantastic. And she comes to, to our office quite often as well. And yes. we get to chat with her. And she's very helpful to us, to the DDA yes. as well. So, very much you, so. She's always been very supportive. Actually, my family's been always very supportive with the fire and everything because so many times over the years, you know, we would go to the theater, you know, go to the show or whatever. A call would come in. I'd get up and leave them and the thing. They'd have to walk home. Oh. Uh, many of the restaurants in town all knew us to the point that, you know, some of the waitresses and some of the, the cooks actually gave my family rides home at Aww. times when I would leave them in the restaurants when I had to go on fire calls and everything. Yeah. And, you know, the Christmas dinners and holidays and birthdays, I got put on hold while we were going to calls. So... I know I owe a lot to my wife and my daughters for being, you know, supportive of me the entire time and understanding. Yeah. I do know that when I retired from the fire department, the first thing she was so happy to see was my radio was gone. So I didn't yeah. have <laughs> the noise in the back. Yeah. Yes. But, uh, definitely. They've been extremely supportive. Of me. Yeah, that's awesome. It's It sounds like a tough a challenge. That's I mean, a sacrifice. You yeah. yeah. Sacrifice is yeah. a great word. Yeah. That I mean, you're doing such a noble thing. So, you know, understanding that. But like, I'm sure. You know. That had to be hard, yeah, for, sure. for sure. All right, now the Lions. Okay, now okay. we can move on to happy Season subject. ticket holder, how many years? Since 1976. Okay. Oh! That's incredible. You have the best seats out of anybody I've ever met. And, I mean, finally, they're doing well. Yeah. So tell me what the outlook of the, <laughs> the season is. The latest that I've heard on the radio in the last couple of days, it's Lions and Tigers and Playoffs. <laughs> and playoffs. There you go. I like it. I like it. Well, it's a good time to be a Detroit sports Absolutely. fan, though. I mean, I definitely caught the end of the um, Tigers game last night. It's just so cool because, you know, they weren't supposed to come out of that one. And now it's going to be a fight at home because my husband's from Cleveland. So now Ooh. that's oh, that's a problem. I'm like, much. you live here now. Like, they're not even the Indians anymore. They're the Guardians. So we can't even say it Correct. in our house. But it's fine. Um, but the Lions, are they going all the way this year? What what are, what do you think? I believe they will. This is this is it. This, this is, is it. it. So I have to ask, if they go to the Super Bowl, are you there? No. You're killing me. Unless what? somebody gives me free tickets. I'll well, be- I feel like <laughs> I'm sorry, but after how many years of being a season ticket holder after forty years, like they should take you with yeah, them. That would Your be nice. VIP I would appreciate status. that. I'm just saying, yeah. like, after that many years of a losing team, they should be like, bravo. Yeah. Okay. Absolutely. You heard it here first, people. Yes. We're on a mission. We're going to make some calls. <laughs> We're going to make some calls. <laughs> but you have some cool other ties. I mean, your grandson is down there. Is he on the field this year doing the flag? Yes. My oldest grandson, Jacob Call, is working with the Lions. He is now, I call him the flag boy, but he's the one that, after they score a touchdown, he's part of the group that runs back and forth across That's the end. That's awesome. So fun. The flag. That's such a fun He also takes part in, they have the Miller beer um, during the one timeout, so they actually do the race with the beer can, oh, the cool. beer bottle and everything. He's also one of those from time to time, so it's funny to see what you know their act is going to be for that game. He helps with the other things as far as holding the flags and such, so. This is his second year doing, and he's uh, definitely enjoying it. But uh, after this last game on uh, Sunday or Monday night, he's feeling a little bit because having to run back and forth six times. Oh yeah, yes. he's not used yes. to that. Yeah, that's awesome. That oh was my great. Gosh. So it's been good. 
So you do, you mentioned earlier going to a show. Do you, you, you do a lot with this. You're interested in theater and arts and stuff. You guys go a little bit here and My there. wife is more than I am. Okay. So yes, by proxy, you mm-hmm. are too. I love that. Yeah. Because, you, you know, Pete comes in and tells us his stories of what he did over the weekend. And you're at the phase of life where we're like very jealous of your <laughs> traveling and your activities outside yes. of our work day. So I have one more serious question though for you. Oh, this should be good. So as the DDA chair, board chair, okay. what do you think is the most important thing for us to be thinking about in the next six to nine months? Oh, that's very good. That's a good one. In the next six. I mean, it can, let's ballpark six to 12 months. What do you think we need to be focusing on? I believe um, we just were awarded after Kelly spent a lot of time on getting us the grant for the ARPA fund grant mm-hmm. that we got from Oakland County. And with that is quite a few projects that we're going to be going in. And it's going to take us almost a year and a half mm-hmm. to get that all in, mm-hmm. into place. So there's going to be a lot of planning. We have to work with the village on it back and forth. Um, a lot of work that's involved in scheduling with that. Um, it's going to take quite a bit because some of it will be disruptive as far as some of the yeah. sidewalks and things like that. But we just did a whole thing of the strategic plan for the next five years. Mm-hmm. And trying to put some of those ideas into place and getting the rest of the board involved and the committees involved with the buy-in and actually bringing the community in, you know, to see our our foresight into the future as far Mm -hmm. as where we're trying to go and what we're trying to believe. And trying to implement all that, I think, is what's going to be the toughest part to get it done. Yeah, I love that. I think that when she, um, we had a consultant that rolled out the strategic plan after we went through quite a... um, a lot of sessions really discussing all this and on the org committee, but, you know, looking at it as five years and breaking it down, yes, it looks doable and it looks palatable. But I think the one thing is, is we are always doing things in the community and we have other focuses too. So it is just getting it done. And with the ARPA funding, all the reporting that goes into that, I think a lot of people see what happens outside of our walls inside of the village office, but so much of that is, you know, reporting and paperwork and so much that we have to do internally too, to make those things happen. So, um, but it's also very exciting because we just did, I think a great job the past four years of making things happen very quickly and efficiently. And this is kind of that next step. Mm -hmm. It's exciting. Absolutely. The biggest, it it is a lot of, yes, it's, you know, a five-year plan, but I mean, we're already we're already into year one of it. Yep. Already. Yeah, you know, it, <laughs> yeah. You know, with the projects that are going on, so I mean, there's a lot of lot of steps involved, but at the same time, it's trying to you know you're juggling multiple different projects at the same mm-hmm. time, and again, it's you know it's an office of two people that yeah. guys are, are doing one and a half, one, one and a half, excuse me, one and a half, <laughs> yes. But it, you know, with all the projects that are going on, it's a lot to try to keep keep on schedule and everything. Yeah. And I think it's the, the three of us bouncing things back and mm-hmm. forth all the times. It's like, what about this? Well, where are we at on that? Mm-hmm. And what about, did you think about this? And trying to make everything move smoothly so that the public sees it, you know, the end result. Yeah. 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 And then all, of course, when you're working with contractors and vendors and the delays that potentially happen yes. with that and the weather and all of the supply chain, I mean, there's a lot of different pieces. There's moving so pieces. many moving pieces. It's, we have a lot of great ideas, but we don't always have the, the luxury of making those happen as efficiently as we would like, I think, sometimes. Is it true? Yeah. Do you have any other questions for Pete today? I don't. I just want to say thank you. Thank you for being our calm in our storm <laughs> because the one thing that I will say about Pete, if you don't know him well, um, is that you are always so even keeled, and I feel like when our – jobs can kind of be a roller coaster sometimes because we are dealing with so many different things and so many different things in the community that we bring things to you and you help us to understand them and mold it into something that is positive and that works. And for that, I'm very appreciative. I know Kimberly is too, because you are our sounding board and we do come to you with everything. And we are women. And at the end of the day, sometimes we're not the easiest. (laughs) It's just Speak true. for yourself. <laughs> well, Pete had all daughters and Wendy, so I'm like, you're and used to it. It's fine. Wendy is a force. So you are. Yes. This, yeah. I don't know that we can compare to her. She's awesome. So we're, we're yeah. <laughs> but um, yes, thank you for everything that you do. I think now that um, you're the board chair, I've seen you giggle a little bit more and laugh and, you know, a little 
a little different side of you. So that's been really nice to see as well. And if you see Pete in the community, come up and thank him. Yes. Because for everything he's doing on a daily basis. Yes. Yes. Excellent. Okay. Thank you. It's been enjoyable. See, we're not that bad, right? (laughs) Not at all. (laughs) So we have a big day. We do. So we got to cut this pretty short. Yes. What are we doing later? We are introducing finally the Courtyard Project. Officially. 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 So ongoing project for two years now. Um, Homegrown grant that we received. Uh, Ashley Ross was a huge part Mm -hmm. of that when she was on the board of writing that and helping us receive that $50,000 in funds. We were able to match that with the consumer's grant that we received after Mm -hmm. that and then put in some DDA money. We then had a private investor come alongside and put in an additional six figures into the project. That really is that whole area. And we are finally ready to do the unveiling today. Mm -hmm. We have um, 75 community members, business owners that are going to be with us in that area today and just really just to celebrate the fact that this is a new community space that is finished. You and I were putting together a fireplace yesterday. Yes, we were in the heat. In the heat, (laughs) on the cement. And you know what I thought about? I have to say this. I'm like, okay, you know, today we're going to get up there and we're going to give like a speech and we're going to be in dresses. But I wish that people could see us yesterday in jeans on our hands and knees trying to put a fire pit together and how many times we had to take it apart. Just because we did it wrong. Just once. Or twice. Okay. Let's not split hairs Okay. Here. <laughs> I have to tell you, after you left yesterday, I had to walk back over there because I was adding some cushions. And all of a sudden, I'm like, I'm looking at it. And like one of the sides was tipped out. We totally forgot oh, two of the screws. no. So it's fine it's now. It's fine. It's fine. <laughs> we need to get that like reviewed by the fire department. <laughs> Probably. <laughs> well, they'll be there. Tonight, we right? didn't have Pete there to help us. So it was, it was a hot mess. Oh, my yeah. gosh. No, it was really fun. I went back um, actually after as well, after I picked my kids up from school, and there were like cute little pillows on the chairs. So I had, those? well, I had Lori oh, okay. bring those out oh, for okay. today. They're really cute. Oxford 4871. Yep. Yep. And we're going to put some fresh flowers out there today. Yep. Victoria's is making food. Summer yep. Sundays is bringing dessert. Mm-hmm. We have all the new businesses that are in that quad back there. And I just, I'm excited to celebrate that area and T-Mobile is even coming yeah. out. So it's going to be great. It's a beautiful space. Um, I think you mentioned everyone, but we also had the murals that are back there too. Yes. Nick, Nick did a great job and he he's did. in town. And so he, he gets is. to celebrate right. with us, yes. which is so nice. So it's going to be fantastic. We, you specifically have put your blood, sweat and tears into that space. More tears. I, yes, <laughs> that's true. That's more space. tears. So it's been, it's been a beautiful, um, coming to life yes. for this space. So yeah. I'm, I'm excited for tonight. I think something about these public spaces that a lot of people don't realize is, yes, we're dealing with village property when we go after the grants, mm-hmm. but that property is also backing up to multiple businesses that are owned by separate building owners mm-hmm. and then separate businesses. Yeah. So to get everybody on the same page and get everybody, even though you're coming forth with the money, you still have to have everybody's buy-in. Yeah. And that is all part of it. And then you're dealing with the contractors and things that we mentioned earlier. So, you know, I was hoping that this could be a year long project. We're, you know, nearing the second year of, you know, when we started. But when you look at, I was just going back and looking at the pictures of where it started and where Mm -hmm. it's at now. And it's just, it's beautiful. It is beautiful. And again, you know, we had weather issues. We have, you know, that's a lot of people to try and make happy yes and we don't always do that unfortunately but um that's par for the course when it comes to a group of that size so yeah that'll be good and then we have witches night coming up october 25th witches night i think that it's going to be wonderful hard to pick a date this year yes um sports plays into all of our lives and so we were going around the michigan michigan state game we were going around the oxford games then oxford homecoming Homecoming, got thrown in there so We ended up having to pick an Oxford game that it's on that night, but hopefully people can enjoy before or after if they're at the Oxford game. And um, I'm sure the bars will stay open. Yes, they will. And just for um, timing purposes, I know we've gotten some questions about information, more details, excuse me, more details for the event. Yes. We are currently in the process of getting specials from the businesses that are participating there. 
entertainment, their activities, their specials for the evening. And then we will compile all of that into a map and we will post that within the next two weeks. I think, I don't even know what date we're at right now. Yeah. Within the next two weeks. And we'll have that all ready to go uh, with information on check-in and with timing is five to 10. Five to 10, but we are going to do a early check-in okay. for the witches who want to shop early. Right. So we are going to have a little fun thing for those that can check in early, um, keyword witches brew. So okay. I think okay. it'll be nice to get people downtown early, dress up, don't dress up, bring a warlock, don't bring a warlock. Right. <laughs> it's going to be a, a good time. Yeah. Look for a warlock, you know. <laughs> Yes, and this is a Stronger Together event that we're doing yes. in partnership with Lake Orion's DDA as well. So the trolley will be running from Oxford to Lake Orion yes. until 11 that 11 night. 11 that night, yeah. Perfect, yep. So yeah, and then we have a very, very tiny break, and then we have more activities in November and into December, but we won't. I can't think that far. I know, I, okay. I, I can't either. Okay. We'll get back on our next podcast. Yeah, yep. Anything awesome. else? Nope. Have nope. a great week, community. All righty.